Hey, what's up, guys? I was recently a guest on the Lionel and Robin show, and they had me on for an interview. I uh, thought it was really good. Some really good information came forth, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So I hope you all enjoy. And I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has been supporting. You guys mean the world to me. Uh, financially, for one, uh, the subscribers, everybody who's listening on all the podcast apps out there, the numbers are increasing, and that shows me that what I'm doing is resonating with you guys and you guys are enjoying it and, and retweeting it and sharing it out and getting so many new listeners man it's been really cool thank you guys for all the support and enjoy this um interview peace okay hello hello my friends this is acla that's alien contactee lionel anderson here with you guys today with a very special edition of alien sundays today i am joined by my co-host, I guess you could say, Robin Markowitz. Say hello, Robin. Hi. Hi, guys. I'm about to try to find this video um, on YouTube as it appears. So you guys are probably a little ahead of me. Um, if you're just finding this video, please share it everywhere. We want to have a really big broadcast. So we need everyone's help sharing it everywhere, yes, all sure. across social media. Yes. And hi, guys. And we also got another very special guest. He is a hip hop artist, covering spirituality, UFOs, much more, tons of good stuff. It is Truth Seeker. Welcome to the show, Truth Seeker. Shalom, shalom, brother. Thanks for having me, man. It's good to finally connect with you guys and uh, do something productive, man. Get on here and talk about some of our experiences and what the spirit is doing in our lives, man. I see you guys online making a huge impact and a taking advantage of the technology so it's finally good to come together and, and put our heads together and see what we can come up with man thanks for having me definitely definitely before we get into everything i just want everybody to go and subscribe to true seeker because we're not going to get into it but he lost his old account you know so we need to get as many subscribers as we can to rebuild his channel so i just wanted to get that out there before we start that must have been horrible when you lost your account, I could imagine. Man, I got I got depressed, man. Part of me was just like looking for other other ways to, to promote and thinking of just not putting anything on YouTube again and just trying to go to like Daily Motion or Vimeo or something like that. But then I just redid it, man, under a different um, email and just trying it again. And, and I'm not really promoting it. I just put everything back up and everybody's yeah. like subscribing and supporting and everybody just encouraging me to keep the information coming and just keep doing it so i'm trying it again man so it is discouraging man but i understand how important the information is to get out there and and it and how delicate it is so um i'm excited about the future as well so exactly me too brother all right well we'll start off i in your music you uh rap a lot about extraterrestrials, UFOs, and stuff like that. And since it is Alien Sundays here, let's start off with a UFO question. What sparked your interest to get into UFOs and extraterrestrials? Like, what was it that happened in your life that this became something? Yeah, um, as a kid, having a lot of supernatural encounters, um, waking up in the middle of the night and, and there'd be beings standing around my bed or waking up at like like four years old and, and having night terrors and feeling an entity like laying on top of me, pinning me down to the bed, having these crazy uh, supernatural encounters and trying to make some um, sense of it all as a little kid. And, you know, uh, growing up and just getting into horror movies, getting into the alien phenomenon, the, the alien abduction scenarios and watching all those movies fire in the sky was big when i was a kid um cocoon different movies like that uh, another movie flight of the navigator which was awesome when i was a kid so just having this fatuation with um the horror genre and then the alien genre being mixed in there with it the sci-fi um mm. when it comes to monsters and it comes to stuff like that uh when it comes to a lot of that stuff being just make believe the alien scenario was something that could probably happen. <laughs> like the yeah. way they explain it in the movies, like you could probably get abducted. You know, the chances of getting uh, abducted by an alien in your room in the middle of the night versus a gremlin or a, uh, a monster showing up in your closet, the alien scenario is a little bit more scary because it could be more real. And there's like based on true stories and based on true events. So that stuff scared me a lot. So there's a lot of fear with it when i was a kid talking about aliens i was scared to death to, 
to wake up and have an alien in my room or, or, or like, yeah, or like get abducted as a kid and never return home and watching those scary movies. So I was scared to death of it. But as I began to get older, um, I still had this uh, fear of it. But c becoming a Christian and um, having a lot of positive encounters with angels and things like that and, and doing the study, um, I'm having these angelic encounters and then I'm doing that. I'm trying to tie in the alien um, scenario as well. And most of the Christian people, when I first started doing those studies, the Christian people say that they're demons. So yes. that aliens are demons. And so I started studying that realm in, in the scriptures and, and listening to different uh, people who do lectures and studies. And that's all they would say, but it was from a biased standpoint. So I started to do more research from people outside the Christian realm and was led to the works of David Wilcock, Dr. Stephen Greer, who just approached it from an unbiased standpoint. And they started talking about all of these people having these positive encounters uh, with aliens and ETs. And, and they were very much reminiscent of the angelic encounters of the Bible. And these angels or these aliens or ETs would bring messages of hope and of love and stuff. And so when you do the research, you find out that these aren't demons. These these ETs or aliens are not demons, that they are angelic, benevolent, that they have our best interest in mind. And people um, are having amazing encounters with it. And then you go deeper and you find out that the whole abduction scenario is, is like this whole fear-based lie that they uh, have created to put fear and hysteria in the field so that when you see a light in the sky, you won't go out there with a flashlight or with a, a cigarette lighter and try to make contact with it and shine lights at it. You'll be scared and you'll run. So they kind of uh, discourage contact. But then when people move past the fear and make contact for themselves, it changes their life. And they find out that these beings have been watching over them from the beginning and have been here a lot longer than, than we have. And they are the angels of the holy books. And it it changes everything, man. It does change everything. I was going to say, I heard somewhere that 80% of what we hear through the UFO community is disinformation yeah. from CIA or whatever. So that makes sense. They're trying to spread the fear that they're here to, you know, invade and everything instead yep. of talking about, you know, the good side, which there's so much good stuff. Uh, how about you, Robin? What what sparked your interest in UFOs and aliens and stuff like that? Um, I think that's pretty amazing. Um, me and my twin flame have both had experiences with extraterrestrials. Um, I've been taken and healed, and, um, and any of our experiences were only of light. They were benevolent. Um, they were not terrifying, but yeah, on the other end of the spectrum, I've heard people tell me um, some pretty terrifying experiences about um, the grays and things that have happened with that. So um, I think that people can manifest experiences with demons that might appear like extraterrestrials yeah. because these entities can really appear like anything that you see them as. Um, but um, in a different kind of end of the spectrum, a lot of people have had really amazing experiences and um, see these as entities that want to heal and teach us or our guardians and um, our brothers and sisters, basically. So I know there's a lot of fear around a lot of stuff. That's how it is um, with anything spiritual. It's like you wake up and then they just kind of push these fear-based opinions back on you to try to put you back into sleep or religion or whatever it is. Um, so it's really key to use your intuition and your own discernment when you're kind of looking at all this information overload around all of us. Um, there's always so much information. Just use your own intuition. Um, but anyone had, that's had their own experiences, they'll tell you usually how amazing it is, um, how mind-blowing it is, and just beyond beautiful it is. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. All right. So here's a topic I want to speak on because most of my Alien Sundays deal with Palladians. Now, True Seek has got a really good song called Seven Stars. I recommend everyone check it out. It's about the Pleiades. So I have to ask you, Trusika, what is your opinion or your knowledge on the Pleiadians? Um, I approach everything from a biblical perspective just because um, of having all these encounters and, and, be, and becoming a Christian. I filter, I've studied the Bible 
and I filter everything through the Bible and, and through and through the anti text and even the books that are removed from the Bible as well. Like they're just near and dear to my heart. Um, so that's kind of like my truth, man. I just kind of filter everything through there. And when we talk about this stuff, most people demonize it, right? So, but if we accept the uh, the information for what it is even in the Bible. So there's so much stuff in there that people have no idea that it talks about the Pleiades, Orion's gate, the, the, you know what I'm saying? The star system, Orion, the bear. And it talks about all of these star systems in the old Testament and in the oldest book of the Bible. So when we talk about the, um, Pleiades, it's known in the Bible as the seven sisters, and it's the, it's the seven star clusters. And for, for anybody who doesn't know much about the Pleiades and you want to see it, go out on a clear night in a night sky, preferably close to a new moon. And when you look up in the sky, it looks like a blur. It just looks like a blur. And it's these, it's a cluster of seven stars. And when you when you look at it, you can see each star. So it's the seven sisters and Revelations 1 and 16 talks about where Jesus said, it says that in his right hand, he held the seven stars and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was shining like the sun in all of its brilliance. And what's so beautiful about the scriptures is that it's all um, allegory about us, about things that happen in our lives and in our bodies, especially when we come to spiritual awakening. Th those stories of the people in the Old Testament are about us. They're not about King David and, and the, uh, trying to kill giants of the Old Testament and trying to find out where this battle was fought. It's about the battle that's fought between our heart and our mind and within our psyche. As we um, go on this road of, of, of this spiritual awakening, those people represent different things in our lives. And so it's the same thing with the astrology. It's as above, so below. Everything that's happening within us is happening in outer space. That's why when we talk about Jesus, we see the first people who showed up at his birth. The first people who showed up at the birth of Jesus was the stargazers, was the magi, was the magicians, those who were uh, trained in the knowledge of the stars. And so instead of demonizing astrology and astronomy, we find out that in the Bible, the prophets were known as the seers and the word prophet and seer translates to stargazers. These guys were stargazers, man. So the uh, the uh, connection there is 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 phenomenal. Uh, God called me as a prophet, and I'm learning what that is, and moving in those realms, and finding out that there is this attraction and, and infatuation with the stars and the things above. And so many times, Jesus says to focus on the things above, for the things of uh, above are eternal. And that's what's so beautiful about it to me, you know. That is really beautiful. So on that topic of Jesus. It's just something I've always thought, uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm right or anything, but is there any possibility, you know, that he could be Palladian or from the Pleiades, seeing how he mentioned it? And a lot of a lot of people would 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 say that um, I like. So so there's, there's a bunch of scriptures that say um, that he took on not the likeness of angels, but that he came as a regular man. So uh, and tr instead of trying to prove it, I, I just like to say that what he what, what jesus did we can do and greater for that's what he said he said the things i do you can do and more so and so when we try to uh kind of tie in that he was a he was a palladian or he was a you know this this special person he it says he took on not the likeness of anything special but he came to show us what you know we can do as far as spirituality as far as walking in the spirit hearing the voices and feeling energies around us like all of this stuff is done like jesus did it and his disciples continued to do those works as well to travel back and forth from heaven to earth so instead of painting him as this um this this special avatar he showed us that we were special and that we can do greater things as well. So that's why I like to try to try to bring it home. Was he from that that star system? He could have been, um, but it, I don't think it was nothing special that that we should follow him because um, he's different. But he came to show us the way and the truth, right? And he came to show us the path. And so he essentially he is a brother, right? He came to show us the way, the, the truth, and the life. And so that's what's so awesome about it is that it's not you're reading a history book or a comic book about a superhero, which there's that aspect too. But it's that it becomes real to us, and we can obtain Christ consciousness, walk in the very consciousness that Christ walked in, and see things like he sees. And he was, he was. He, he knew about the Pleiades. He knew about the star systems. He knew about spirits. He knew about the spirit realm, about the seal of Solomon and all of this stuff. He knew it. This he, he was, he was the embodiment of it all. 
uh, I don't, I'm not sure if you've seen it. I'm sure you have, but there's like ancient paintings where it shows Jesus with UFOs yeah. above him yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm sure he knew of ships. And oh, yeah terrestrials and whatnot yeah i mean even in the old testament um the word chariot so that's the word that translates in the king james it says the chariots so it talks about the chariots of fire right and so it says that god traveled in a cloud by day in a flame of fire by night so they so these israelites are being led through the wilderness and during the day it looks like a cloud and we heard of cloud ships or yeah. ufos that that travel in clouds not to be seen uh, and then at night they're just this radiant beautiful light spectrum and they look like fire traveling through the sky fire in the sky i mean that's what where, where the, that comes from so yeah. the the whole word chariot is where we get the word in hebrew merkaba and we all know that which means vehicle vehicle of light the merkaba so we see that all of this stuff is 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 um uh, in the Bible, and it's something beautiful. Jesus definitely knew about the chariots of fire, definitely. And th and th there's times too, man, where like there was a prayer that was done because the uh, it was somebody who was uh, up, about to be overthrown by another nation in the Bible, and he was scared to death. He's like, man, we're, we're probably about to die. And the prophet prayed for him. He's like, let me pray for you and open up your eyes so that you can see who we have protecting us. He prayed for him. And he was able to see chariots of fire all the way around them. And he was able to see the angelic armies that were there watching over them. And it says they're able to see the chariots all around them. And that's with us. We go out there under the night sky and we pray. We ask God to open up our eyes to let us see. This is my story. This is what I did. Let me see your chariots. Let me see the seraphim. The word seraphim in the Bible translates to the fiery ones, those who are made out of fire. In the book of Enoch, it says that the angels of God travel the heavens back and forth as a flame of fire, but as they wish, they can come to earth and take upon the appearance of men. In Hebrews, it says that we, uh, we entertain angels unaware, that we don't even know it because they look just like men down here on the earth. And when, when people find out that they are, they're angelic, the men begin to try to worship them and, and follow them and things like that. And, and, and that's not what they want. They don't want you to follow them and, and pray to them and things like that. They come to bring messages the word angel means messenger, right? And so in essentially, we're angels of God when we have a message to bring as well. Right on. That You said it perfectly. Robin, do you have anything to say on that? I think that's amazing um, because we're messengers. That's really our job. Um, that's what we're doing here too. And we're kind of turning into angelic, an angelic race right now as we're activating our DNA. I also love um, how the stories are talking about UFOs and chariots in the sky and you nailed it. That is your Merkaba or your light body. So as you said before, as above, so below. Um, and these stories really are about us. The amazing thing about the Bible is it is written kind of in code, a lot of it. And it really does pertain to our bodies, our ascension, activating our chakras is in there, um, things about our light body. Um, and I think right now is a time when we really have to be making ourselves spiritually strong. We need to be building up our Merkaba or our light body mm -hmm. um, because I'm not sure what's going to happen. Um, I don't think any of us really know, but it, it wouldn't really surprise me if we had some type of pull shift or reset and those that will survive are those that have their light body strong or their Merkaba activated because that's what you need to be able to pass through all of this. Um, so I think it's really amazing um, how it pertains to all of us and what we're going through right now. Oh, for sure, for sure. All right, well, I, you mentioned something here that I just have to ask Trusika about, and that's spiritual protection, because I find it's very important, the, like, if you choose to go into these different realms through meditation, trances, and stuff, that you're spiritually protected, you know? Yeah. So, tell me about your spiritual protection, what you do to keep yourself from negative archons and all that yeah that's a good question because i know you've seen my video about is meditation demonic and exactly. there was so many people laughing about that title but so many because you know I, I i deal with a lot of people who are either in the church or coming out of the church right so there's a lot of people who are still holding on to the hysteria and i've, I've had it, heard it said by many people in the church realm that if you empty out your mind to go into meditation then demons inhabit those empty places and by emptying out your mind you open up your 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 mind to demons and it's that couldn't be anything further from the truth but so whenever you you get into that stuff 
there's always the the doubt. Well, maybe what if they are true? Like, what if what if demons do come here to inhabit me? And you're, so there's there's some fear there, and you can't fully give yourself to the experience or fully give yourself to the moment because there's that doubt. And so we understand in the scriptures that uh, doubt is the enemy of faith, and, and you can't walk by faith and doubt at the same time. So you have to walk in this place of knowing who you are, what you are, and have those experiences with confidence. And so going in those realms early on, many people w will walk in fear. But what I would say is to um, cover yourself with the Holy Spirit. Ask for angelic protection, angelic persistence, and uh, your your faith should allowed you to activate those realms. So I, I go into those realms now and there's no fear. There's no doubt. I don't have any fear about anything in my life, even questions and things that, that come. Um, I, I have a peace that surpasses all understanding, all human understanding surpasses it. You have people, most people have no idea that this peace that we hold within our hearts. And this is a peace through the, the that, that the Holy Spirit brings, man. And that that's for everything. That's for meditation. That's for being surrounded in in a, in a presence of your enemies. The scriptures say that he'll make a table for you in the presence of your enemies, a table to sit down and sup and eat a big feast and a big in big meal while all your enemies are around you, ready to jump on you. And so, I don't want to paint everything as being beautiful because there are those negative entities out there that do wish to harm you, that hate you, and they want to use your body as a vehicle and suck your energy. And this is how these energy, these these different, you know, demonic, unclean spirits is what the Bible calls them. They exist. So, but when you go into the spirit realm, and I say this, most people starting off, you have to deal with the lower level entities. You have to, and, and it's fear, it's doubt, it's hurt, it's trauma fear-based trauma that happened when you was a kid, things like that. And there are people who will help you and you know, here to help you and assist you like Robin, like myself, who offer classes and private sessions to overcome the, the baggage. So if you take that baggage into those realms or into any area of your life, it begins to come out. We've seen many people who are even in the new age circles. When we mention the Bible, we mention God, we mention Jesus, they get upset. There's like this, oh, I don't like the religion, and all, and they get mad because something of a pastor or a church person or a parent who was a Christian figure spoke over their life when they was a kid or did something to them that they still hold resentment to this day, and they're well up there in years. And so we have to deal with that stuff early on. Going into the spirit realm, you're going to deal with the lower level entities, but don't be scared trust perfect perfect love cast out all fear so we're greater than them uh they, they are here to teach us things about ourselves and to uh, move from one level to the next so they all serve their their place they're here for a reason but they don't have to affect you and, and make it where you have anxiety and and you can't trust anybody no more and everybody's out to get you and these are things that we have to deal with if we're going to ascend to the higher levels and walk in true spiritual freedom for sure. Robin, you got anything to add to that? Uh, well, negative entities um, usually hate when you use words like Christ, Christ consciousness. Um, it really kind of disturbs them. So I always pay attention to that um, because putting yourself in the light of Christ consciousness is one of the best forms of spiritual protection or praying and asking to be in white light. Um, it's pretty much my go-to but it's also really good for healing people and all sorts of things. So you can pray for yourself to be put in white light. You can pray and ask for anyone in your family or your friends to be put in white light. It's just really good. Um, but we are living in the middle of a spiritual battle, a spiritual war. Um, this is a war over consciousness. And even um, those that have mastered and conquered their own darkness, there still is a lot going on collectively in the same place. So you really do need to protect yourself all the time. Um, and I really think I like the point of letting go of fear because these entities feed on our fear. So if we were to eradicate fear, these entities wouldn't even be able to exist or thrive here. And um, I know there is a place for what's going on um, in the lower dimensions, but we can get to a place where we don't need any negativity anymore. We don't need um, yeah. any kind of, you know, negative entities around us to be teaching us to a place of evolution that anymore. So just protect yourself, um, work on conquering your own darkness and work on your spiritual ascension and let go of fear. Fear is like the worst. It's what we're here to conquer. Um, I already had in my own life, all of my fears play out over and over. And I've reached a place where I've conquered pretty much all my fears. But I know a lot of people are still hanging on to fear right now in manifesting situations out of fear. 
Um, and there's a better way. I really like also how you brought up this sense of peace you have, because that is what I'm working on so hard for and towards all the time, just to become more and more peaceful, more and more compassionate, more empathic. And um, I'm trying to find that piece of place and stick place of peace and stay there all the time. And it's really amazing because in this same place where there is turmoil and there is negativity, we can find this great sense of peace where none of this really phases us anymore and we can kind of lift out of all of this. Right on. Mm -hmm. Agreed. All right. Well, you were mentioning the Holy Spirit, Derek. Uh, For everyone out there who's not familiar with you know christianity or spirituality just simply put what is the holy spirit there is no christianity without the holy spirit there is no there's no uh spiritual authority without the holy spirit and so um it makes it a lot easier instead of trying to do things on your own and trying to find out ways to manipulate and that's the big difference and so there's a um a scripture in in the Bible where uh, Simon Peter is dealing, um, no, Philip is dealing, who was a disciple of Christ, is dealing with uh, Simon Magnus. And Simon Magnus, that name goes far in the the realms of the occult because he was following the disciples of Christ and he's seen them healing people. He's seen them casting out demons and unclean spirits by the power of Jesus and through the person of the Holy Spirit. And he was following them, watching them, and he was studied in the occult. And he said, you know what? I want that. That power that y'all have, teach me that. He said, I have money. I will buy it from you. Let me buy that from you. And they rebuked him because because they, they knew his, his intentions were were uh, impure and wrong. And he was only going to do it for selfish gain and for showmanship and things like that. And he was one who um, was a, a um, mocker of their faith, but he wanted them to teach him that. And they rebuked him. And um, so he symbolizes basically the left-hand path. You have the right-hand path, which is led of, 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 of perfect will, of, of trust, of all things that's beautiful and the left hand path which is which is more of i guess we can say as a blank blanket statement more of the satanic uh self mastery i can do this look at me type path or whatever so there there's this these two different paths or the two trees that, that are symbolized in the garden and so the holy spirit is there for us to be to embody and, and to be the embodiment of Christ on the earth, and essentially it is Jesus manifested through you on the earth. And so, in the book of Acts, it says that you shall receive power whenever the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So people are looking for power. So you can look for that power on your own and figure it out and study in books, or you can have that encounter with God, that direct encounter, direct experience where you receive what is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus talked about it in Matthew 3.11. They call it, he says, there, there's, a, there's a baptism of water, but there's another baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. So it's, a, it's fire and it's cloven tongues of fire. And when it happened, they was reported to be able to see flames of fire on top of people's heads. So you see all this ancient art of the fire either on the sacred heart being inflamed or the fire on top of their head. So it's literally a baptism of fire. And so when I, when I came, came to God, I was in really dark witchcraft and talking to spirits and they would come to me in the middle of the night and speak languages that I couldn't understand. And it scared me. I got sick, coughing up blood, going schizophrenic, opening up my mind to any spirit that wanted to come through. And, uh, I couldn't look people in the eyes. I couldn't hold conversation. I was scared. It was a place of pure hell. I called out to God, uh, and he came in and changed my life and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and it came through and washed me of all of my sin. Like I felt it. I literally felt all the evil that I've ever done, all the bad thoughts, all the impure things I've done, the stuff I stole from people, lied, cheated, been in the made packs with devils my whole life and in an instant it broke and i felt clean and washed of all the wrong that i've ever done and it felt like a fire and water at the same time i began to tremble and cry and it was a euphoria and i I used to love to do a lot of drugs and uh it was a euphoria that that 
took the place of anything like that. And it was an awesome, life-changing experience. And that's the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we can tap into that at any time. And it's tangible and it's transferable for people to receive that. And um, it, it comes with forgiveness of love. And it's beautiful, man. And so the Holy Spirit in the Bible is known as the comforter. Because he knew that on this walk, we we're gonna, it's going to be hard and we'll need comfort at times. So those times where we need to panic or we should panic and all the nations are panicking, we can, we can walk in peace and comfort. It says he's the teacher. He said he will teach you and lead you and guide you into all truth. Why? For there are many false prophets who have gone, who have gone out from among you. And they're here to lead you astray. They're in the New Age circles. They're in the Christian circles. But the, the Holy Spirit, which is the teacher, said he'll lead you and guide you into all truths. He's the teacher. He's the, he's, the, he's the comforter. He's the protector. And without that, it's dead religion. All Christianity, and, that, and that's our enemy. <laughs> our enemy is dead, empty religion. Or even in the New Age circles, this dead, uh, empty left-hand pass of trying to do it on your own, man. It becomes a lot more fun. When you have the baptism of fire and it's known and I'll open it up. It's known in other religions as different things. It's known as the, as the uh, Kundalini awakening as well. So we've been in many Kundalini yoga uh, encounters and stuff. And, and that same fire is there in its presence. So uh, every, every religion, every culture calls it something different, but it's the same pranayama. It's the life force that's moving through everything. And it's here to assist you, guide you and empower you with with power from on high and and so I, I have the christian narrative and that's my experience and stuff but i do recognize it um the, the book of joel there's a prophecy in the book of joel where he says i will pour out my spirit on all flesh your young men shall prophesy your 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 old men shall see visions and your young men shall dream dreams and these dreams and revelations and things that are coming that happened god poured out his spirit on all flesh and he said he'll deal with anybody everywhere who would repent and turn from their sins and it's, that's like number one people don't like the sin word you can call it your ego we call it the flesh in the bible it's called your fleshly nature the sin nature that we all you know like to you know do what feels good for today and you know regardless of any what anybody else thinks or feels and so uh that that's what the scriptures talks about and it's it's a beautiful thing man it is, and I got a personal experience I've been wanting to tell you for a long time, and I figured I may as well do it on air here. So about a year ago, it's because I was listening to your music, actually, yeah. about uh, Holy Spirit and everything, and I was uh, meditating, and I decided to, you know, say a prayer and ask for the Holy Spirit. Mm. So I did that, and immediately I felt like I was getting sucked into something, and I saw all these psychedelic patterns, and I wasn't on drugs or anything, totally yeah. sober. And it was one of the most psychedelic experiences of my life. Was that the Holy Spirit, or was I just creating that in my, my mind? Hey, look, so, so that's a thing, and this kind of deals with the fear, too. When you go, when you ask God, you ask the Holy Spirit to come. He's the comforter. He's a perfect gentleman. He's not going to force his self upon you. He's not going to make you follow him and, 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 and force yourself that way. He's a perfect gentleman. And, and the scriptures say, this is the, the, how we can know that um, he's a perfect father. And he says that your father, being wicked, knows how to give good gifts for your birthday and things like that and gives gifts to their children. How much more will God give you the Holy Spirit if you ask for it? And so you ask for and you receive. That's all you have to do. You don't have to jump through hoops. You don't have to take all these tests. You simply ask for it. And that's all it takes. So, yeah, that was 100% the Holy Spirit, man. That's awesome. I got chills from you just telling me that. And the, the beautiful thing is, is that a lot of people are telling me this. Like, that, like people are listening to my music and they feel the Holy Spirit from day one. They get chills and they get chills all over their body and then they're taking places spiritually. They're taken to new levels, depths and heights and they learn terms and phrases and they're encouraged to pursue a spiritual life. And so it's so beautiful that that God has gifted me with the, with the ability to, to be able to do that because I'm paying it forward because there's so many people that I've listened to in my life where I'm listening to their music. And I'm having a supernatural encounter or whether it's feeling the Holy Spirit. And that's the greatest compliment I can get is that somebody listens to my music and they have a life changing uh, encounter with God through listening to my music. It's awesome. That's what it's all about, you know, and uh, y your music has helped a lot of people. I could tell you that, including mm -hmm. myself. 
So, Robin, back to you now. We were talking about the Holy Spirit, but... Um, no, that's okay. I can, I can do that one. Um, I am accessing that same energy. It's, I, I call it a Kudalini energy, though, but it's really the same thing, and I really like that. I like hearing um, different perspectives, um, describing the same things, basically. You know, that's a really amazing thing about any of these religions is that they're all describing the same truths and the same kind of things. And um, I can really resonate with a lot of the pictures of Jesus and Mary show, you know, the circle behind their head, as with a lot of ascended masters. You see that in um, a lot of Western religions where they have the circle behind their head signifying the crown chakra being open. And um, I have my own experiences with this Kudalini energy. Um, I call it Kudalini the divine energy and it's something that will come into your life and literally like a fire it will purify everything in your body your mind your life everything um it just kind of burns away any kind of negativity and, it's and this is the same kind of energy um that i'm accessing that opened all of my chakras and it's around us all the time um i like to also call this energy god in my own world or intelligent infinity there's a lot of different names for it um but you know, as I come to deeper and deeper spiritual truths, I'm just beginning to recognize this as a God force, a God energy around us. But it's also a conscious energy that is able to communicate with us. Um, we're kind of like children, I guess, you know, to the universe. And it's always guiding us. It's always pushing us, teaching us, and setting up scenarios and situations for us to learn and to evolve and to grow. And um, it's really just an amazing energy and power force. And it's also um, a healing energy, and it's the energy hitting our whole planet right now, too. The same energy. I guess you guys can call it the Holy Spirit is hitting our planet. Um, but it's happening all around us, and it's really transforming everything around us. And we see um, a lot of things happening. Like, I know there was just a hurricane, um, and there's crazy weather going on. And earth, wind, and fire are kind of making huge impacts on our planet. Um, but there's a conscious energy that is guiding us and in charge and control of all of this so people can kind of just let go and relax and go with the flow um and i know it's in our nature to be like control freaks but we can kind of let go because we have this omnipresent force known as god controlling and guiding this huge divine plan so we can kind of relax a little and let go um mm -hmm. but kundalini energy is beautiful the holy spirit as you call it it's really beautiful um and i like kind of tying together the different perspectives yep yeah, that's really, really cool. Well, I want to speak now on psychedelics because, you know, mushrooms, stuff like that, God obviously put here on earth, I believe. Yeah. So what do you have to say about psychedelics? That's Just funny. I got, a, I, got a, I got a question today on my uh, YouTube. Somebody asking me about psychedelics. We've done a lot of shows on it, and I try to um, – make the link between the Bible and, and psychedelics and, and, and the Bible and spirituality and, and everything. But when it comes to psychedelics, I've, I've had uh, a few life changing experiences um, and it changed my life um, with um, psilocybin mushrooms. Um, it, it all is about the, the uh, preparation and the encounter, I don't think that it's a, a party drug. I don't think it's something to be taken lightly. People uh, set themselves up for bad experiences and things like that. But for me, um, I, I've got a song that I put out called The Golden Teachers. And so these are um, this angelic um, race of beings that when I took the psilocybin mushroom called The Golden Teachers, they came and assisted me and taught me on this experience and that's what i was looking for that's what i got it challenged me it scared me i was i'm taken to suck through wormholes and portals and, and seeing where we go when we die and um a lot of things made a lot more sense after that my my music uh you know made a lot more sense to me <laughs> in hindsight after ri writing about angelic contact and traveling the universe and seeing the star systems and going to that place and gazing into eternity like i've, I've experienced that stuff but on the psilocybin mushroom encounter that was multiplied and it was like okay you're the guy who was talking about this stuff let's really show you what it looks like <laughs> took me out of my body um and when we did it it was a, it was a, it was a men's retreat uh, a couple guys got together and we were all in sync so it was like five of us and and it was like a roller coaster we'd go up and we'd come down and we'd come and we'd look around it scared me i, I didn't know how strong it was and uh we hear about people on like ayahuasca and being sucked out their body and meeting beings and stuff this happened on psilocybin mushrooms and so yeah. it was powerful 
life-changing and our ancestors did it. It was a rite of passage. We don't have rites of passage anymore. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So when you have a coming of age, uh, we don't have that anymore. And all the cultures, when their young men turned, you know, 13 years old, they took them out on a journey. It took them to the desert. They ate uh, mushrooms. They smoked peyote. They ate a handful of fire ants and they bite the inside of your stomach and you go on a psychedelic encounter. They had all kinds of, of stuff that would, that was done there by our ancestors, but we don't do it anymore. So for me, it was, I was greeted by ancestral spirits that were there watching over us and they, they calm, uh, helped me and, and there was a peace about it. So I'm, I'm for them. Um, I, I, I am, uh, but I, but not as a party drug, not as a party drug, not as a drug, but as a sacrament and as something to be respected and I taken very seriously and to do your I research. Always, yeah. I always call it a spiritual tool. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. It's not something for partying, which a lot of kids do do it for partying. You know, I know when I was 15, that's, I wasn't thinking about spiritual reasons, but now I only use them as a spiritual tool. Yeah. What do you think about psychedelics, Robin? Um, they were a big part of my journey. I think a lot of people have had those experiences nowadays. Um, you know, as a teenager, I would do acid and mushrooms. And um, I would say they're amazing, but they shouldn't be taken lightly. These kind of things um, stick with the natural substances like acid can tear holes in your aura and it's not very good for you. Yeah. Um, if you want to hallucinate, stay away from that. That is a government made thing. And stick to natural things, stick to like peyote, um, mushrooms, you know, things like that. Um, but I would say that a, a big part of our journey, we do release DMT during. Um, DMT is made in your third eye. And if you've ever been through any kind of trauma and everyone can raise their hand right there, your brain has already made natural DMT. Um, so I do think it's best if you can do it natural. But these are tools that you can use kind of like crystals yeah. to kind of enhance your spirituality when done right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Trusika, I just got a really good question now. Uh, the third eye. What does the th the Bible does it say anything about our third eye? Well, as far as calling it the third eye, see, the Bible talks about everything um, in spirituality, essentially, right? It talks about traveling back and forth to heaven to earth. It talks about sensing spirits around you. It talks about overcoming. It talks about psychic abilities, um, hearing voices, being led of voices, intuition. All of this stuff is in the Bible, but it doesn't use those terms. It doesn't say psychic abilities. It doesn't say clairvoyance. It doesn't say clairaudience. It doesn't use those terms. It has different names, just like every religion. It has, they have different names and different uh, you know what I'm saying terminologies and things. So when it comes to the third eye, the Bible does talk about what, what Jesus says that, that if thine eye be single, <laughs> the yeah. whole body shall be full of light. And that's to be single minded. And the scriptures also say that a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So you have to be focused. You have to be single minded, know what you're here to do and do it good. Right. So when it, when it comes to the, the third eye, Everybody has it. And, and I've got some teachings out there that I don't really feel like it's something that we have to open. I think many of us are born with it open. That's why when we're children, we're able to see uh, into the spirit realm. We're able to have these encounters and things like that in the spirit world and see stuff. And you see children who report just seeing like angels and stuff and being um, really connected to, to that realm. Because they, they have a lot of innocence about them. And so with us going through trauma and, and, and drinking the water and all of the bad foods, it, it, it what they call uh, calcifies the pineal gland. So it almost, it almost closes. I believe that we're born with it open. And so that's why we're so connected. But there are techniques that we can do to help reopen the eye or just to, to be able to focus on how to use it, essentially. Because we're having, and this is why the work that we're all doing is so important is because there's many children, there's many kids and people who are having these encounters with the spirit realm, uh, with the psyche, with the mind. They go around a gr large group of people and they can feel the thoughts and energy they can literally feel it on their body they can hear the thoughts of people and this is freaking them out they go to the doctor the doctor's putting them on ritalin and and different like antidepressants and stuff to quiet down those voices where our ancestors would embrace those children and teach them how to use it so that's why I have a lot of a lot of people who reach out to me, man, who are who are going through that and who are on medications and things like that but my music 
and and the the prayer and and like the different meditation and stuff it helps them so much to connect so dealing with the third eye um uh, it is how we perceive the spirit realm it's how we're able to see into the spirit with our eyes closed or with our eyes open we can see things we can sense things and it all comes through the third eye and so it's the it's the gateway to the soul it's how we're able to peer into the other realms beautiful right on brother now for everybody listening and everybody who sees this, as I said, Truth Sika is a rap, hip hop artist. And I was going to ask you if you could maybe do one of the verses of Mystic Mind for yeah, everybody man. just to see your talent, you know? Yeah. No doubt, so, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I that tried. would be good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, that's why I got a song called Mystic Mind, and I have a video up, all of my stuff. Just type in Truth Seeker with the A-H, and you'll be able to find all of my work, my podcast, my interviews, and all that. But this is one of the songs, and I'll try to do some of it. So it goes, um, transcend the physical, spiritual, individual, faith followed by works, so we're healing them with the syllables. Third eye visual, teaching mystical principles, knowledge from the prudent and giving them to the simple. Look, an overactive imagination, they medicated and then sedated, expect the worst and exaggerated. I'm frustrated, where we headed is not where we have been. It's Kali Yuga, we at the hands of the fallen men. Righteous teachers, we're giving wisdom like Solomon. I grab my pen and write blessings that will bind up the gin. It's God's breath and I feel it like I'm feeling the wind. I come too far to look back and start over again. Stimulate your mind You seek and you will find The kingdom is inside Wake up and realize You need nothing that's outside The blind leading the blind Pharisees and false scribes Religion will only blind When truth hits a mystic mind One begins to prophesy Dreams and visions dwell inside Resonate and start to shine To a place where I reside Ancient ways through space and time Jacob's ladder I will climb deep inside the mystic mind It's so funny that, that, that we were just talking about Everything that was in that song Right? Yeah. Everything yeah. like, you know what I'm saying, the medication that they take with the, for the overactive imagination, everything we just talked about was in that verse. So. <laughs> it was all meant to be, brother. And and the chat room, everybody's like, oh, yeah, when they when you were rapping that. They were it's making everybody happy, that's for sure. For sure, for sure. Awesome. All brother. right. I got chills while you were rapping. It's awesome. That's why <laughs> awesome. I do it, man. It's so awesome. Yeah, Chills, cool, cool. Well, there's one last topic that I'd like to talk about, and we've spoke a little bit about it, but, you know, it's reptilian. I'm always talking about the reptilians. Mm -hmm. So, what are your views on reptilians? And <laughs> also, would you say that Satan from the Bible is a reptilian? Because in the Garden of Eden, yeah. he was a top snake and all yeah. that. Yeah. Let's hear what you have to say on that. Essentially, um, when we're talking about aliens, we're talking about UFOs, the reptilian word comes up where it shows up in the Bible exactly where you said that the, the serpent, which is the one that was here to beguile Eve and, and, to, and to go after Adam. And so um, when God comes in and he puts enmity, um, enmity between her seed, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. So we see there at the very beginning of the book of Genesis that there's a serpent. And he has a seed or he has a lineage or a line of people. And so when it comes down to it, there's all types of uh, theories and stuff that people have seen with the, the, the elite, the, the ruling class shape shifting. And there's all kind of crazy videos. I'm not I don't I don't give credit to that or anything, but there's some interesting videos out there. I will say that. But um, so we understand that the seed of, of the woman, which is the seed of Christ, the seed of man, will fight against the seed of the serpent, the serpent seed. And these are what we're known as the 13 bloodlines, the ruling class. They're all related. They've all been here. They all set each other up with um, uh, positions of authority and seats of power, and they control everything. They control the media. They control the movies and all, all of this stuff. And they are the, the princes. They, they are the bankers. They are the queen. All of these people are the ruling elite. These are the same people that Jesus had a problem with. These are the same people that Moses had a problem with. When we understand spirits in the spirit realm, spirits don't die. Humans die. Spirits live forever. So the same spirits that Moses was dealing with with Pharaoh and, and Jesus was dealing with, with with Herod, we're dealing with as well. So these same ruling elite uh, figures are still here. So the scripture calls it the serpent sea. So where the ETs and the good guys come into play. They want to know who's the good guys, who's the bad guys. The good guys are traveling around in, in outer space. When you see those light ships, when you see those beings traveling forth back in the sky, and if you haven't seen them, 
Go out there. Give yourself enough time. Give yourself to the experience. You may have to do hours and days. But if you want to see them, they're ready to show themselves to you. It may take a little time, but go out there. Make contact. They're traveling back and forth, and they are the ones who put us here. They're watching over us. They're making sure everything goes as planned. And so those are the good guys. The bad guys are the people here on the seats of power and authority who look at us as the useless eaters, who look at us as uh, the fuel or blood to make their machine work, where they can set up and live lavish. And, and, and they have packs with demonic entities and demonic spirits and everything. These are the people who are here, and this is a lot older than um, – then we know it's been going on since the beginning and hence all of the the uh, the paintings and the statues of these archonic um, demon looking reptilian figures. And, and, they're, and they're still digging up um, civilizations that are buried under the ground in, in, in Turkey of these huge statues in these places where people live with these huge statues of these demon looking people that look like reptiles. And they, they come here and they, they, they were venerated and they were worshiped. And the Bible gets really deep on this man, because when it talks about the other gods in the old Testament, like these gods were put here by Yahweh to watch over mankind and to guard over different regions. And so every region would have a God or a spirit that watched over them. And these were these literal Kings of the Bible and um, Ashtaroth, Baal, um, who's the big one, um, the owl, I forgot, I can't think of his name, uh, Moloch, right? All, all of these guys existed, they're mentioned of in the Bible, and what, what they did is they took the worship of the people for themselves. They say, okay, don't worship Yahweh. Don't give uh, credence to the creator. We're watching over you. We'll protect you. Trust in us. And and. And God got upset. So in, in, in Psalms, I believe it's Psalms 38, it talks about that God stands in the congregation of the mighty or Yahweh stands in the congregation of the mighty. And it talks about that uh, ye are all gods, but today you'll die like men for, for deceiving mankind. And they were doing all kinds of stuff. They're making the mankind worship them and they're eating the children and, and, and yeah. killing children. Sacrifice. And, and they, yeah. they, they required blood sacrifice, man. Yahweh put an end to that stuff, man. And so in the spirit realm, like the spirits of their children and the fallen angels who came down and, 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 and got with women and they have Nephilim children. And there's a bunch of stuff we can go into the Bible, but um, their spirits are here still on the earth to this day, warring against the soul of mankind. And so they need bodies. They need vessels in order to, to, to see what it feels like to, to experience fine wines and, uh, and, and, and taste meat again and things like that, that they miss. They need a body or they need a host. And so when they inhabit the bodies of humans or, or essentially ride upon you so that they can cause you to do all types of craziness confusion and murdering and things like that which they love and it takes honor away from the most high god who brings life um that's that's what they're trying to do and all of this stuff is spoken of in genesis it goes into more detail in the book of enoch as well if anybody's trying to un understand the spirit realm enoch is like a must-have when trying to understand how these demons and angels operate now and what they mean in our lives for sure for sure that is some deep stuff. How, uh, do you got anything to add, Robin? Um, I think that's pretty amazing um, that you mentioned that we're battling the same spirits that they were battling um, in biblical times. And that is so true and so important. Um, and I think it's important that people remember that we're all powerful, that um, Jesus came to show us that we could do this too. He was teaching ascension. He was teaching his disciples ascension. Um, they all were ascended masters, I think, in the end. So mm -hmm. we can do these things too. Um, and I think it's very important that we're careful about what we're opening ourselves up to um, because I'm seeing a lot of this same kind of stuff with negative entities all around us, in people, taking over people, attachments. And I think the best way to combat this is to be service to others. Yeah. Um, these kind of spirits really prey on people that are service to self in some type of regard. Um, so when you're service to others, you're going to be um, protecting yourself and, you know, kind of putting up a defense for this kind of stuff. Right on. Um... Well, that pretty much answers all the notes I had. So at this time, I'd like to ask you, Trusika, to let everybody know how they could get to you, um, all your work. Yeah, totally, just... totally. Yeah, um, you can essentially just go to truthseeker.com, truth, S-E-E-K, 
A-H.com. And I have a podcast that I do. I do a weekly podcast. I try to get as many as I can during the week, and I have different guests on and interview them and have roundtable discussions and stuff. So subscribe to my podcast that way, as well as the music. All the links are on the site if you want digital music, CDs, things like that. All of it's available. And I put a lot of time and effort into the video side of it. So um, every, like like even the song we just did, the um, Mystic Mind, um, there's, there's visuals for that. And we have songs about... ET contact and angelic contact and there's visuals behind it and it takes it to a whole nother level of, of, of seeing the, the, uh, the visual aspect of it as well. So all that stuff's on YouTube. Um, just type in my name anywhere and there's so much stuff, man. I, I do podcasts and music and I do uh, private sessions, healing people, like doing uh, group therapy and stuff, man. And um, so anyway, that's what I do, man. Thanks for having me on, Lionel, and thanks you. Thanks for supporting my work. Lionel is a patron. Lionel is um, supporting over at my pa uh, Patreon, and uh, I want everybody to go follow his work too and everything that he's doing with, with, with Patreon, and it helps um, make some type of income so we can kind of pay to keep this stuff going, pay for the research, and, and, and keep doing what we're doing, what we're put here to do, man. It's, it's so awesome. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I'm about to sign up for both of you guys to be patron this week too, and I think that's really good. You guys are getting this stuff going, getting – you know, different places to put different videos out. Um, so definitely check out their Patreon. Um, I'll probably put a link up for both of them this week on my page. For sure, and for let sure. people know um, how to get to you, Robin, your YouTube, everything. Oh, people can find me. Um, I do have a YouTube on Sparks of Divine Light Healing. Um, our website is sparksofdivinelighthealing.com. And the best way to find me, um, I'm Robin Markowitz on Facebook. All right. And everybody knows who I am. And if this is your first time watching, as I say, subscribe to Survive. I cover it all from New World Order, Illuminati, extraterrestrials, UFOs, and much, much more. So thank you for everyone for watching. And we're going to try and be doing this on a weekly basis, me and Robin. Uh, I got already got a good guest for next Sunday. So stay tuned, stay subscribed, and everybody have a good one. Peace, peace. Shalom, shalom.